Hey everybody, welcome back to The Engineered Angler. I've been getting a lot of questions about mixing resins and whether doing it by weight or by volume and some specific questions about troubleshooting problems when the resin doesn't harden properly or never really hardens. And recently I actually had a problem with a mold. It was when I was casting the mold for the pan belly lure, the lure I made on that series of videos where I did a design and build a lure from scratch. And when I poured the second half of this mold and I pulled it off, the inside was tacky. The outside set perfect but I knew immediately what I had done wrong. So the key to a foolproof method of mixing resins or even your silicone rubber is to have something you can repeat and a process that has the minimal number of steps possible. You want to reduce the tools you use and reduce the number of containers you use. So I highly recommend that you mix with one container. Now when I'm mixing casting resin, I'm mixing part A, part B, and the uh, micro balloons as a filler. And I do it all in one container. So the key to being able to follow the process I'm about to show you and only use one container is to mix everything by weight. So you need to have a gram scale. This was, I think, $11, and it's probably my third or fourth one. I buy them online, I get them as cheap as I can find them, and if you can get them to two decimal points uh, in the gram scale, that's all you need. Now, some resins will tell you right up there, uh, mix one-to-one -one by weight. Others will tell you by volume. Some will say by volume or by weight, but the ones that say by volume, the reason they do that is typically because either part A or part B is heavier than the other. So all you really need to do then is just to figure out how much heavier it is and then uh, create a little multiplier, a little factor. And I did that in a video not too long ago and I'll go ahead and put a link right here. It's a good uh, reference to go back and check out how that process is done. Now most folks hesitate to use one container because they're afraid of making a mistake and pouring in too much on the second part and having to pour go back to the first part and, and I know seesaw back and forth and try to catch up with your mistake but if you put your clear coat parts into a squirt bottle just a mustard bottle you can buy anywhere or these I get these at Harbor Freight uh, I think they're six for like three bucks then you'll have the control you need to keep from going over. I usually get within a couple of hundreds of a gram uh, where I want, and that's more than accurate enough to give you a good result. So let me share with you the mistake I made. One of my techniques is to initially pour a very thin layer of silicone onto the lure blank so I can get a skin thin layer and that allows it to degas naturally really simply and really effectively so all the bubbles are gone that would affect the surface so I know I've got no bubbles up against my lure blank then I can just pour everything else in there so I use the stirring stick to help me get a thin layer on there and not uh, over pour well that was my mistake and this is why the instructions always tell you scrape the bottom scrape the sides right make sure you get a thorough mixing but they never tell you to scrape the stick if you don't scrape the stick you have layers of unmixed material on your stick always so in the process you have to scrape off your stick and that's why one of the things you always want to do is use a flat stirring object whether it's a popsicle stick or a tongue depressor or whatever it might be but don't use a circular uh, stirring stick because that makes it really difficult to scrape off you have to do 50 million little scrapes to get it all off there and you don't want to have to do that especially if you have a quick setting resin like these casting resins the other thing you want to do is to go ahead and cut the circular part off your popsicle stick I always cut it on a little bit of a skew this way I can get in to that corner at the bottom of the cup real easily so let me show you exactly how I do it and I'll walk you through it this is a really fast setting resin so I'll have to be quick and I'll have to talk fast so stick around okay first I'll put in my part A and I use six grams for this particular lure a few more drops and there it is 6.02 is what I got on this thing 
Now I'm going to go to the micro balloons and I'll just tear it out. I'll zero out the, the scale and I know I need to do 1.2 grams and there it is. 1.21 is what I got. Now this is not critical. I can take my time mixing this. All I'm doing is emulsifying these two together just so these micro balloons are become part of the solution and you can see it only takes a few seconds to do it. So now at this point I will do my first scrape of the stick and I scrape both the sides and the edges and then push down the material that I just scraped off all the way to the bottom. So before I go to the part B I'm going to go ahead and zero again and now it's a matter of pouring this in nice and carefully and uh, and quickly because this sets up so quick and a couple of drops to bring it to six. I got 603 that's pretty good. Now the mixing technique is just like before you scrape the sides and scrape the bottom really well and then when you're about halfway through which only takes about a minute you scrape the stick and you do that at least twice and one last one time just before you pour and you shove everything down to the bottom and then another good mix of course with silicone you'll be doing this much more slowly and you can get a couple of good scrapes in there for your stick to make sure that you uh, got all that bad stuff off now I'm going to go ahead and pour this in okay and that's guaranteed to give me a good well set lure in about 25 minutes so like I was saying the idea is to have a system a process that you can repeat and you don't forget always have your jars marked always have a specific way you mix whether it's A first or B first and use one container and don't forget to scrape your mixing stick as often as you can during the mixing process. So that said, if you do have problems with the set of your resins, there's a couple of rules of thumb on what's causing them. If the clear coat or casting resin just doesn't set up, it's probably because you mixed part A with part A or part B with part B. It happens. How do I know? Uh, I just know. On the other hand, if your resin only partially sets up, then it's likely that you mixed it incorrectly. You had the wrong volume to volume or you made a mistake uh, when you were weighing it. And if you have areas in your lure that are tacky or soft, then you know that you didn't mix it well and maybe you didn't scrape off that stick and that caused you the same problem that caused me. Now you don't have to use this process exactly the same way. You might come up with something a little better for yourself, but you should use the basic principles to come up with your own process. Make it as simple as possible, as few tools as possible, and as few steps as possible. If you do that, it's easy to repeat and it's easy to get a really good end result. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.